Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome back to the Quarantine Kitchen where we make fun, feel-good recipes that connect us all. Today, I want to take you to Naples for a delectable, portable little morsel that I think you're going to love. We're going to make calzone. Let's go. First step is the dough. I love using my beautiful stand mixer with a hook attachment. And this is going to be really a great multi-purpose dough. You can use it for pizza, for just about anything. It's fairly simple to make, but I want to show you the technical things as well. So in my stand mixer with a hook, I've got some double zero unbleached pizza flour. You can use all purpose. You can also use bread. So here I am going to add instant yeast. So the one thing to know, yeast and salt need to always be apart. So what I do, the right thing to do is actually put the instant yeast in with the flour. And I actually just stir it with a spatula because this is a small amount here just to make sure that it's fully incorporated. And then we can start adding the wet ingredients. So I'm going to turn my machine on low and I'm going to put in 200 ml of water. We're going metric today. It will be, all the recipe will be in both metric and imperial, but metric is so much more precise, let's say. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil going in there as well. Not too much, it's really just about 25 ml, a couple of tablespoons. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little higher speed. All I want to do here really is make sure that that flour is going to incorporate. But because this is a small amount, I again use my spoon just to make sure everything, or my spatula actually, just to make sure all the flour is incorporated. Because it can take a little bit of time. When you're making larger amounts, it's easier. Okay? Now you notice the salt is still here. I haven't put it in. I like to add the salt pretty much close to how I'm making bread. I add it only when everything else is incorporated. That protects the yeast a little bit and stops the two of them because the salt on contact with the yeast can kill it. We don't want to do that because then we're going to have flat bread, super flat bread. Okay, salt is now going in. And this first mix will take about three to five minutes. So about four minutes in on a medium speed, I want you to see what's happening in here. It still feels a little bit sticky and the hook is sort of, you know, moving it around. The sides are clear, but it's still pretty sticky in the center. Let me show you, you see that? So now, it feels sticky to the hand. So what I do is take it out of here. So you might be tempted at this point to add more flour, but actually do not. Let me get rid of my hook. If I add more flour to this now, my dough is gonna be a bit dry. So you wanna go as far as you can without adding any more flour. So what I do is turn it out onto the board. And you see how it's, it's still a little bit sticky? It feels like See how it's sticking there to the bottom? Again, I'm not gonna add any more flour. I'm just gonna let it sit for another five minutes and then I'm just gonna knead it for a couple of minutes by hand. It's super easy, but you gotta know what to look for. Okay, three minutes of rest and look at the difference right away. You see that, how it's not sticking to my hands? Now it looks Look at that. So I want to avoid adding any flour unless it's absolutely necessary. I want it to be smooth, but it's a bit tacky. Just, you see that, just sticking? It's gonna be a tender dough and I didn't add any more flour to it. So that's the trick that I think saves your dough from it being too dry. Now. Look at that sheen. Is that a thing of beauty or what? So now all I'm gonna do is let it rise in a well-oiled bowl. 
the first rise I like to do that at room temp. Gorgeous. I pat a little bit of oil on top just so it doesn't get a skin. Make sure it's totally sealed, covered. And this baby is gonna rise room temperature. I want it to be doubled in bulk, okay? Once it's doubled, this is what it's gonna look like. And the thing I'm not gonna do is no punching. I wanna keep a delicate hand as I can. I mean, the air will collapse, but I don't wanna punch it. Just turning it out again onto my work surface, just like that. And without punching it down, I'm gonna divide it. So this is going to make, look at those air pockets. Do you see that? Yeah, that's a good ferment. All right, and I use a pastry scraper like this. You can see that, I, again, I have not added any flour, right? So the pastry scraper, fast move. I wanna do it in six even pieces, being fast but fairly delicate, if that's possible. So now what I like to do is I wanna just tuck them under and turn these into round balls, individual, with a little bit of surface tension. So how do we do that? I like to just roll them. See how I use my fingers there, pulling them towards me until you get a little bit of surface tension. Of course, there is a little bit of oil on this, so it's sliding a bit. I can move it to another part. And look at that. That's what we're looking for. Let's do it again. Wasn't that fun? Okay, so I'm just tucking four ends in. Then I flip it over, pull it towards me, creating that surface tension. See those bubbles? Bubbles! That means we're gonna get good dough. There we go. Now they're kind of even, but not fully. So what I wanna do now, you got a couple of options at this point. So ideally, and I mean super ideally, if we were in Naples, this is gonna go in the fridge, in a container, wrapped and sealed with a little bit of oil on top, totally cool for about 24 hours. And that process really gives the gluten strength and it gives your dough and your pizza or your calzone in this case, a much better flavor. You can go ahead and use it two hours from now, but that's the perfect ideal way of making it. So I'm gonna show you a couple that I had chillin' And I have this amazing little container. This is great because if I put them in one container, they spread out and then they're gonna bleed into each other. So I found this and I thought this is perfect. I'm gonna use it. Okay, so these were made yesterday. And again, I'm being super delicate. Now because this is so soft, now I need a little bit of bench flour, okay? Because if I turn this out, they're really gonna stick. like that. Who's ready to make some calzone? And by the way, that's the way you say it in Italian. I'm not even gonna say in Napolitan, but let's go turn these babies out. I'm being absolutely very delicate with them. Did you see this bubble? Look at it. Oh. That is a bubble. Wow. All right, now I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna start working this. So the big no-no, 
Oh, this is so cool. The big no-no when you're working with dough. Okay, I'm gonna burst this bubble. Look. <laughs> the big no-no when you're working with dough is to get a rolling pin out. Because then you're just gonna get a flat, completely bubbleless dough. So this is the best way to work it with your hands. You see how it's so tender, this dough? That's also leaving it overnight. It's much more pliable. The big difference between pizza and calzone, so calzone, you want the middle to be a little bit thicker and the edges to be thinner. Because when this gets folded over, you're gonna double up the edge and then it'll just be too thick. It'll be a big mouthful of dough. So it's the opposite. You're not gonna have a big crust around the edge. You want it to be thin. So now if I take a rolling pin and do that, I'm gonna flatten all this beautiful unevenness. So now, using just the weight of the dough in my hands a little bit. This is also a great technique, using your fingers. And you can also use the weight of the dough itself, but you don't wanna make it too thin in the center. And calzone in Italian just means stocking because they're stuffed, I guess. It totally makes sense. Okay, look at that baby, it looks amazing. Now the key here is why we don't wanna roll this out too thin or pull it too thin is because the fillings, it's just gonna explode. So I wanna make sure that I do a good job here, tucking down the edges like that and making sure that it's fairly round, right? Okay, I think that is sweet. Now, toppings, or shall I say fillings, what are we gonna put in this beautiful calzone? The thing about calzone is there's no tomato in it. Now, in America, they tend to dip it in tomato, but in Italy, they actually put a little bit of tomato just on top. I'm gonna do neither. So let's see, first ingredient is going to be some ricotta. So you want a fairly dry ricotta. You don't want anything that's gonna to be too wet. See that? Okay, that's gonna go in. And I'm just gonna put it on one side, like this. And for the fillings, you can do whatever you want, but I like to keep everything closer to the center. And I'm not mounding it too high either. All right, now where are we gonna go? Now I have some beautiful spinach that I actually blanched and sauteed with just a little bit of garlic because what you want is to take the moisture out of it. You don't want anything too wet in there. Look at those big pieces of garlic. Ooh, mama. All right, now check out this cacciatore salami. I'm gonna use a little bit of this, taking the casing off making sure, and I'm gonna slice it kind of, again, in manageable slices. Oh, that looks good. Look at that, baby. That's a salami. And I'm gonna cut it probably in half, and then in half again. And now these guys are gonna go over here but you can fill this with just about anything you like. Again, not too wet and no tomato sauce inside. A little bit of, I thought this would be fantastic. I have a bit of pesto, you can put fresh basil in it, but the pesto is gonna give it a nice little kick, a nice peppery kick with the olive oil. Then I'm gonna do, I've got a beautiful roasted pepper so you can see the technique here that anything that I add is not gonna be super wet. So again, as much as is gonna fit in here. Already it looks like the Italian flag. Look at this baby. So cool. Uh, what will I do now? Okay, now I'm gonna hit it with just a teeny bit of chili, but very little just to give it a bit of kick. 
And then I've got some beautiful mozzarella. This happens to be buffalo, but it's fairly firm. Again, you don't want to add anything that's too wet. And I don't want a kilo of cheese in here too, because I've seen some calzone, oh mamma mia, too much, way too much. Last thing going in, because it is about the cheese, is a bit of pecorino, sheep's milk, a little bit of a salty kick. Oh, I'm getting super excited about this baby. And now we fold. So I've got a little bit of water because I do like to make sure that the edges are a bit moistened just so that I can tap it down afterwards and flip it over. Here comes, look at the texture of this dough. Can you stand it? Look at that. Okay, I'm just gonna press it down so we don't have any air pockets. It's not supposed to be thick, it's supposed to be exactly like this. And I'm just pressing it down. Traditionally, it's just done like that, but why don't we do a little, it's perfect like this. We're gonna do a little touching with my finger and then just to have like a nice crimped edge. This is not necessary, but it'll be nice. Oh yes. A little bit of semolina on my paddle, like that. All right, very delicately. Gonna just put this guy on. You see how we can shimmy it? And I wanna make sure that I make some holes in the top for the steam to escape. Like that. Look at that baby. 470, we're going in. Now look what I have in the oven. I've got that beautiful, I have a cast iron stone in here actually, but if you have a pizza stone, a bread stone, whatever it is, it's important so you get the right temperature. That's gonna be about eight or nine minutes. Oh yeah, we got Vesuvius, baby. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. Oh, how good does that look? Wow. Ready? We're gonna do the, whew, look at that baby. Okay. Repeat with the second one. Oh, look how good this dough is, whoa. All right, let's go full on Napoli. I'm gonna go for broke. So this is what they do in Naples. Put a little tomato, passata, just a regular crushed, beautiful Samarzano tomato. Little bit. Everything is measured. Even though Italians are extreme with food, everything is measured. All right, and then I'm gonna go with a little bit of pecorino on top. That's gonna to caramelize. And so it kind of looks like a pizza, but, but then when you open it, it's gonna be more cheesy, right? Look at that baby. How's that? For a little calzone, calzone. Did I mention we're celebrating? You know what we're celebrating? I gave myself a haircut. It was gonna happen. I'm in day whatever. I couldn't take it anymore. So I just like mm, cut my own hair. We're having calzone as a result. All right, ready? 470 in the oven. Boom. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Okay. So look at 
a girl can change her mind, right? I went for the sauce on top like they do in Naples. Look at that baby. Makes it more tender. Oh, that looks so good. And this is the size for me. This is the size of a calzone, not any bigger than that. Oh. Did I mention you're gonna be making this? Very soon, very soon. Really amazing with a little bit of that tomato on top. Now, I said I wasn't gonna do the dipping, but let me try it. Let's see if we put the tomato sauce on just like a dip. And then I can make up my mind. Do I like it American style or do I like it Napolitan? No, they're pretty both darn good. Look at the bottom, that's what you want. Thin, airy, light, tender. This is going to be a celebration. Not just because I was cutting my hair, but a real <laughs> celebration. Thank you for spending some time with me in the quarantine kitchen. We went to Naples, we made two different calzone. It was so much fun. Share, like, let me know what's happening in your kitchen. See you very soon from the Quarantine Kitchen. Bye.